the forgotten machine that shouldn't exist. Here's a machine that spins at 35,000 rotations per minute with no moving blades. Tesla built this weird turbine in 1913, and it was so powerful it could tear itself apart. The disc would actually warp from the incredible speed. But here's the crazy part. Tesla claimed it could hit 97% efficiency, way better than anything we had back then. So why did the world completely abandon this breakthrough? Today, we're going to build one and find out if this forgotten invention could actually power a modern home. Why Tesla ditched blades altogether. Most people think turbines need blades to work, but Tesla had a completely different idea that sounds impossible. Regular turbines grab moving air or steam with specially shaped blades. These blades catch the flow and spin the whole thing around. Tesla threw out this entire concept. His turbine used completely smooth metal discs with no blades at all. The discs just sat there flat, spinning in the flow. How could smooth surfaces possibly capture energy better than carefully designed blades? Think of it like stirring honey with a spoon. The honey sticks to the spoon and gets dragged along as you move it. Tesla's turbine works the same way, but with air or steam instead of honey. When fast-moving steam hits those smooth disks, near-surface viscous drag produces a boundary layer where steam molecules stick to the metal surface and drag their neighbors along. Tesla stacked disks so those layers overlap and transfer momentum from one disk to the next. Here's where spacing becomes critical. Tesla calculated disks should sit exactly 0.4 millimeters apart. That's thinner than a credit card. This tiny gap creates multiple layers of sticky steam all working together. Steam flows between the disks and grabs onto both surfaces at once. More grabbing means more power gets transferred from the moving steam to the spinning disks. The steam follows a spiral path, starting at the outer edge and working toward the center. This spiral gives way more contact time with the disc surfaces, which means more torque gets transferred to spin the whole assembly. Tesla reported a small prototype reached up to 35,000 RPM, but this led to disc warping and wasn't sustainable at larger scale. Tesla's design creates this perfect storm of sticky interactions. Multiple discs give more surface area. Tiny gaps multiply the grabbing effect. The spiral path maximizes energy transfer. Every part of the system works together to squeeze power out of moving steam. The physics looks absolutely beautiful on paper. Steam flows in, gets grabbed by all these sticky layers, and spins the disks at incredible speeds. But here's the catch that explains why this amazing physics doesn't always translate to real power generation. Those same forces that make the system work so well also create problems that Tesla never fully solved. The faster the disks spin, the more stress they experience. The tighter the gaps, the harder they become to manufacture. The elegant physics works perfectly in theory, but building a machine that can handle these forces in the real world brings challenges that Tesla's era simply wasn't ready to handle. The question is whether modern materials and manufacturing can finally make Tesla's vision work at practical scales. Can we actually build one today? Building a Tesla turbine is no simple task. Unlike conventional machines, parts aren't readily available and most workshops have never worked with this unusual design. The options are typically costly custom builds or fabricating everything from scratch, which demands careful planning. The biggest challenge is precision. Tesla specified disc spacing of about 0.4 millimeters, a tolerance so fine it was nearly impossible to achieve in 1913. Only with modern CNC machining and 3D printing has it become practical. To picture the difficulty, imagine stacking 20 coins with perfectly equal gaps, then spinning them at thousands of rotations per minute. Even the slightest wobble or uneven spacing would destabilize the system. Material selection adds another layer of complexity. Metals available in Tesla's time often warped at high speeds, whereas modern alloys and composites handle stress much better. Still, each disc must be identical in thickness and weight distribution. Tiny variations can introduce vibrations strong enough to destroy the turbine. The housing design presents its own obstacles. Steam or compressed air has to enter tangentially, striking the edges of the discs at just the right angle, much like water hitting a water wheel. If the angle is off, the fluid simply bounces around inside without delivering much energy. Exhaust flow is equally critical. 
The spiral inward motion only works if the central outlet generates the right suction. A port that's too small causes pressure buildup, while one that's too large lets the fluid bypass the spiral path altogether. Measuring performance requires specialized equipment, a torque sensor on the shaft, a generator with a power meter, temperature probes, and a data logger to capture data in real time. Proper calibration is essential for reliable results. In short, assembling a Tesla turbine demands weeks of meticulous work. Precision, balance, inlet angle, and exhaust sizing all determine whether the machine runs smoothly or tears itself apart. When executed correctly, the setup reveals whether Tesla's century-old concept can truly deliver the efficiency and power he envisioned. Putting Tesla's turbine to the test, the turbine connects to a standard electrical generator through a belt drive system. Data logging equipment starts recording voltage, current, and power output. Time to see if this century-old machine can handle modern power demands. The testing methodology uses common household devices that people actually need every day. A light bulb goes first, then a small fan, followed by a laptop charger. Each device gets connected while sensors measure electrical generation. The goal is seeing whether the turbine delivers steady, reliable electricity like wall outlets do. Can the Tesla turbine deliver enough consistent power for real-world use? The answer gets complicated right away. The light bulb flickers as steam pressure varies. Power output jumps around instead of staying steady. The turbine spins beautifully but struggles to maintain constant electrical generation. Steam consumption runs way higher than expected too. Actual power output measurements tell the real story compared to what typical home appliances need to run. The turbine works fine for basic lighting and small electronics, but running a microwave or hairdryer? The numbers show this system works for tiny loads only. Anything requiring serious power draws simply won't run. Here's the efficiency reality that hits hard when measured against Tesla's theoretical claims. Tesla's 97% efficiency claim was theoretical and depends on very high RPMs under perfect conditions. Practical scaling gets limited by material and centrifugal stress, so efficiency drops when you slow disk for safety. Additional losses from housing heat, seal friction, and coupling losses to an electrical generator further reduce usable output. Real-world testing shows the complete system achieving much lower efficiency than the theory promises. Material limits become the ultimate bottleneck because disks can't handle the speeds needed for high output. Higher steam pressure means faster spinning. Faster spinning creates more centrifugal force. More force warps the disks and destroys those critical tiny gaps. Push too hard and the whole thing shakes apart. The materials available today still can't handle the extreme conditions needed for serious power generation. Making bigger versions creates exponentially worse engineering challenges. Larger disks experience way more stress from spinning forces. The background research shows that spinning large disks would exceed material limits at practical speeds. Maintaining precise gaps across bigger surfaces becomes nearly impossible. Heat expansion affects larger parts much more severely. Every size increase multiplies the manufacturing problems instead of just scaling them up proportionally. The turbine works but can't compete with conventional power generation for home use due to fundamental physics and material constraints. Tesla's elegant design bumps into hard limits that no amount of clever engineering can completely solve. These same limitations that kill power applications actually become advantages in completely different situations where the unique properties matter more than raw power output. The strange places Tesla's turbine found a home. Today, bladeless turbines are used where their gentle handling matters, in artificial heart pumps that cause less blood damage, wastewater systems with reduced clogging, and oil processing for better handling of high viscosity fluids. These specialized high-value niches reveal how Tesla's design found its true calling far from power generation. The turbine's unique properties make it ideal for applications where conventional pumps create problems. Regular pumps use spinning blades or gears that chop, crush, and damage whatever flows through them. Tesla's smooth disks move fluids gently without any cutting or grinding action. This gentle handling becomes critical when the fluid contains something that can't be damaged. The same features that limit power generation actually become advantages in other contexts. Those smooth surfaces that couldn't grab enough steam energy now protect fragile materials from mechanical damage. 
The gentle fluid movement that seemed inefficient for power generation becomes the perfect solution for handling sensitive liquids. Artificial heart pumps use Tesla turbines because they don't damage blood cells like blade pumps do. Traditional pumps with spinning impellers destroy red blood cells as they move blood through the system. Blood cells get chopped up by the sharp edges in high pressure zones. Tesla turbines move blood smoothly between the flat discs without creating destructive forces. Patients using these pumps have fewer complications and better outcomes because their blood stays healthier. Wastewater treatment facilities rely on Tesla turbines where the gentle fluid handling prevents clogging and damage. Sewage contains all kinds of solid particles, fibers, and debris that would jam up regular pumps. Spinning blades get wrapped with cloth and hair. Sharp edges wear out quickly from abrasive materials. Tesla turbines handle this messy fluid without getting clogged because there are no blades to wrap around and no tight clearances to jam. Oil refining operations use Tesla turbines where high viscosity fluids work better with smooth disc surfaces than sharp blades. Think of it like stirring thick honey. Sharp blades create turbulence and heat that can damage the oil. Smooth surfaces move the thick liquid gently without breaking down its chemical structure. Refineries processing heavy crude oil and thick petroleum products get better results with Tesla's gentle approach. Modern CNC and 3D printing plus advanced alloys and composites address the manufacturing and material problems Tesla faced, letting engineers revisit bladeless designs for specific tasks. Computer-controlled manufacturing maintains tolerances that were impossible in Tesla's time. Advanced materials can handle higher speeds, opening up possibilities Tesla never had. Tesla turbines thrive in niche applications where their unique properties solve problems conventional turbines can't handle. Medical devices, chemical processing, food production, and specialty manufacturing all benefit from this gentle fluid handling approach. While our turbine failed to displace grid power, the same gentle flow explains why it survives in medical and industrial roles. The design works perfectly when protecting the fluid matters more than generating maximum power. These successful applications point to a deeper truth about innovation itself. Tesla's turbine, failure or ahead of its time, Tesla's turbine wasn't abandoned because it didn't work. It was abandoned because it solved the wrong problem for its time. The world needed massive power generation in 1913. Tesla's design excelled at gentle fluid handling instead. Great innovations sometimes need to wait for the right applications and materials to reach their potential. Modern manufacturing finally gives us the precision Tesla needed. Modern materials and precision manufacturing address some of Tesla's biggest barriers, enabling niche uses, but the fundamental scaling and centrifugal stress limits still prevent it from competing with large-scale blade turbines for home or utility power. Tesla's failed invention continues to save lives and solve problems in ways he never imagined. Bottom line, elegant in theory, useful in niches, but not a practical route to home power with current materials and scaling limits. Which part of Tesla's turbine surprised you most?